How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of FTB Infinity Evolved here in Minecraft. Hope you guys have been enjoying the series so far. If you guys have, make sure you guys leave a like on today's videos. It really does help out. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe as it also really is appreciated. So in the last episode, we focused on our storage solution here um, to connecting all of our current storage up to the ME system. I, uh, in between episodes, went ahead and reconfigured what we had. So before we take a look at the changes I did, to kind of review what I did, if you didn't watch that video, I highly recommend you go back and you make sure you guys watch that. If you didn't or you don't want to, completely understandable, but a quick recap of that is effectively, um, we were using thermal expansions item ducts to connect from the tesseract in to inject all the items we needed or rather all the items we mined however that became problematic when it came to connecting to the me storage the me storage i was able to get to connect to all the drawers via the drawer controller here and then i put another one in the corner for these it worked however we didn't have access to these which was problematic when we wanted access to the electine the diamond, and the redstone, and several other items, including just cobblestone. So, in order to fix this, I went ahead and... Oh, crap. Well, I guess we'll start here. Um, I went ahead and moved a few things. Firstly, I moved the controller over here so that we could access two sides. Each side allows us to have a dense cable. And here, we're running the cables as such. Here and here. And then... if. Eh, well, I probably can't get back up there from here. Um, and then we're using ME smart cables because they allow for eight channels compared to, I don't know what the basic cable is, but basically each junction is its own um, kind of terminal or terminus. And so here we have eight, 16, 24, and then 32, and then we ended up, I think, think just shy of a full 64 I, I think we only have 60 um and then the two, yeah we have 60 because then the two extra are over here uh terminal for both controllers but anyway so that allows us to connect everything up and then our setup for how we're getting stuff from the tesseract i re i initially had the tesseract feeding straight in I couldn't quite get it to work. I don't know if it was speed or what it was, but I found that just injecting it from here into the into a chest works. And then what I also went ahead and did is I also kept our ender chest just in case, because sometimes I need to clear things out of my inventory. And until we make uh, the wireless access point, we're just going to go ahead and keep this. Eventually, once we get the wireless access point, we could potentially get rid of this altogether and not have to worry about it. But for now... I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Then, so what we do is we use an import bus to pull from the chest and put into the ME controller, and then that automatically will search for an inventory to put it in, and because we have no drives, it immediately defaults to these. Now, once we get the drives, you are going to have to set certain priorities, so that way the ME system knows to put stuff where. Um, for now, it's automatically putting it here where it need, where where is there's space, and then... Um, it, it's not perfect as you can see cobble has wound up in some okay pretty much every ava available spot that is here um, is it efficient probably not eventually everything on the drawers will probably go into a drive and we'll probably get rid of them everything here that's on a or in a barrel or a deep storage will more than likely stay as that Especially, like, for instance, the cobble. Yes, we can turn this into uh, compressed cobble, but e even at this compression rate, we're going to be using so much that a deep store is still going to be superior to a barrel or even a drawer or even a several drives. So my idea is as we phase the drawers out in favor of the new drives, which I still haven't made any, we will basically eventually just convert all these into deep storage slash barrels for things as we accrue them because for now we don't necessarily need a, say the vast storage of iron bars but that doesn't mean that won't change 
or these fuel things that apparently only stack to four and several other components um but yeah and then I'm trying to think what other changes also i did have to go ahead and mine out this wall just so that i could have access to the side so that i could make sure every every single point was being accessed and you can kind of visually see where things are being used so if we look up here we can see how it bridges off and how it all connects back down to these two separate uh, points but anyway if we take a look down here so this is kind of the cleaned up area uh, I went ahead and used some facades so that way we could kind of get a cleaner look we are also keeping the crystal growth accelerators where they are and again for now the ME drives those might eventually move I don't know if I'll move them here or where they'll go or same thing with this terminal but now what we have is we have a terminal that allows us to access everything we, that we have, including everything in the deep stores, which is really nice because it makes it easier for me to go and grab, say, sand and then chuck it back in, right? And so it's really nice to have all that and just have access to everything we have. Um, you know, because now if I need cobble, I can just see how much we have and grab it, which makes it very efficient. And as for what we're going to do in today's episode... I was kind of contemplating a couple things because I know at the end we left off with uh, whether or not we're going to continue the refinement of the waste for the reactor or kind of what have you. So I looked into it. So if we take a stack of this, it does turn into that plutonium, which from what it looks like is just another fuel. I don't know if it's more efficient than the yellowium or if it's just like re-enriched uranium uh for those of you who know how that works um basically it it needs water oh i can't even do anything with this because i don't have water on me okay but effectively it turns into blue plutonium we put that back in we can also use the plutonium to make something else but i looked into that and apparently that's only used for a turbine housing so we don't really need it um thought the process was actually going to go a little deeper than it did kind of surprised so our current fork in the road is one of two paths path a is uu matter and making well the mass fabricator and going that route path two is getting actual armor slash a better jetpack because don't get me wrong i like our little jetpack we've had it now for 30 30 episodes going on 31 uh, as of this one but it, it's it's very limited it's 25,000 RF I have to constantly recharge it and sure we're not necessarily using it a whole lot I mean every time I jump I use a little bit of energy but when I'm building the base or if I'm off exploring it's it's a pain in the ass quite frankly uh, it, it's it's bad I have to constantly either keep a the energetic infuser on me or I have to go grab a cell and the energetic infuser. It's just not great. So there's a couple different things we can look at for armor if this is what I decide to go do. Um, one of which being we could do the basically the uh, I forget what the armor set's actually called but basically the advanced electric suit from um looks like advanced solar panels i could have sworn this was for, yeah okay I, th I think the base suit is the quantum suit um and basically it combines like the scuba helmet i am pretty sure it gives us that protection from radiation um not just that it does that advanced wireless receiver i would have really loved to get into draconic evolution but uh we're gonna need to figure out a way to get more of that actually does it tell us an easy way to get that so i would like to start getting into draconic evolution i take it that there's probably not going to be a whole lot okay well what this draconic evolution will probably be a little ways away i'll keep looking into that uh because i mean the armor for draconic evolution looks really cool the wyvern helmet and the chest plate and everything that's pretty good um see matter and energy most of this we can pretty much ignore 
I know we're going to want the wireless access point. Let's see. I do want to keep looking into magic and see why we haven't been able to progress. I want to say it was because we couldn't make something. We couldn't figure out how to... Oh, it was the, I think it was those weird saplings. Usually when we can't do a thing in a mod, it's because it's locked behind some sort of research or something. I don't know. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and look into some different armor sets and try to compile one that makes sense for us. I'm leaning this quantum suit because I really like it. And it requires iridium. Maybe we're going UU -U because I... Yeah. That, that decision was just instantly made. The second I saw Iridium, yeah, we, I am not waiting for that damn laser room to make Iridium anymore. That it was painful. All right, we are doing the other thing then. You, you matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what on earth do we need for that? Where was it sufficient? Nope. Uh, nuclear? Yes. Okay. We need a mass fabricator. So to make a mass fabricator, we need some things. Those things I can do. All right, I'm going to get some of this stuff crafted up because I don't think we have uh, the components we need. And just to, you know, save a little bit of time because we've seen a lot of this before. I'm going to go ahead and get, like, all this grinded up for the lapis. And, yeah, I'm going to get most of this made. And I will be right back. And we're back. I hope you guys... Uh... Don't mind that I kind of went <laughs> overboard and worked a little more through this quest line than I was initially anticipating, but uh, basically we made the mass fabricator, we made our scanner, pattern storage, and then we made a replicator, and then the last part was creating a recycler. So a quick rundown of my rough understanding of this from both kind of what I remembered doing at one point and then the quest book itself um, basically the mass fabricator is what makes us the uu matter now it's as long as it's plugged in it's going to be constantly making it um, to speed this part up to not take i forget what the actual amount of energy it is one million eu which is quite a lot of rf i believe right i think it's eu turns into more rf not I, I have no idea. Um, anyway, in, in order to get an efficient, we need to use the recycler. And the recycler makes scrap boxes, right? So it has basically a 1 in 8 chance or a 12.5% chance to do what we need. So if we were to go grab, let's go grab some cobblestone. And then we'll go highlight this. It's imperative, eventually we will hook up the cobblestone probably, because I think that will probably be what we end up with the most of. And basically, uh, cob. Right, we'll just bring a bunch into our inventory. Um, effectively, We'll hook up the cobblestone to this to just basically dump. And I'll probably do more than one because as you can see, it's it's not the fastest thing. There, there are ways we can speed these up as they are IC2. So we can get the uh, pulling and injector upgrades, which will allow us to automatically connect to these two, similar to thermal expansion. And then we can also get the overclock upgrade while I'm waiting here. Over clock yeah that's thermal expansion so the ic2 one's actually not too bad it's just the coolant and the cables all right and so then from here we get one little well in this case we got two bits of scrap so if we say plug them in oh, well the amplifier immediately went away but it kind of sped it up for a minute um so basically as it goes through it's going to generate a little bit of uu and same thing here we can also connect that up as for the scanner what we can do is so if we have we have what are known as memory crystals. Those are going to go in here. And then they'll be inputted basically into the pattern storage. And then the replicator. Um, again, th think of Star Trek. Or what's another? I, I think Star Trek's like the only thing that I know of that has a replicator. I'm sure there are others. Um, or 3D printer, I guess. But basically what we do 
is so now that we have basically our make anything liquid uh, here in the scanner and then in the pattern storage we can use these two to be able to make iridium for way cheaper in energy costs well actually I don't know if it's gonna be way cheaper in eh, probably is it's probably way cheaper in energy costs and also time and I mainly care about time um, than the other way with the lasers and then here in the replicator so we will put the in this case well this memory crystal doesn't have anything but then effectively we put it in here uh, I don't know where it goes into this particular one none of those probably because it needs to be in the pattern storage okay so now now that we have our blank crystal memory we need to figure out okay well how do we make what we want to make well in this case don't do that so you put the item you want to scan and it's gonna scan it right it's gonna upload it onto our little drive in this case we want iridium or i don't know if i have one made Hopefully I do. I should have a couple. So I want to say we had three extra being made. Do we have one? Yes. All right. So let's grab one. I would laugh if we actually had enough to make the suit. The uh, the quantum suit. I really would. All right. So now we're going to take the iridium ore. We're going to stick it right into the scanner. So it's going to go ahead and scan it. And as you can see, it's not a fast process, so um, definitely go get a drink. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here for the whole, the whole thing. Um, but effectively, that's what that's what's going to happen is it's going to go through. It's going to scan. This is going to do its thing. Um, and then I will be right back once this is done, and then let's we'll make some iridium more. So I'll be right back. All right, and we're back right as it finished so now we have our scan completed so basically it tells us our result and it says okay well it's going to cost us 120 millibuckets of uum or universal something matter basically uu matter um and basically zero eu pretty good so we're going to save that so now it's saved onto this crystal memory right and so then what we can go ahead and do is if we put this crystal memory in the pattern storage, we can hit import from crystal. So now it's on the pattern storage and we also have it here on the crystal memory. Now the reason I'm going to save the crystal memory, you could just go chuck it off into some unknown space or I believe you can reuse them and overwrite what's on them. However, if you ever wanted to move your pattern storage... You do lose what was stored in it um, in terms of the data, right? So if you have your collection and you don't want to have to rescan everything, well, yeah, you're probably going to want to hold on to these crystals. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go chuck this into storage. It's going to go live somewhere in the multitude of places. Um, so basically now we can go ahead and select our different patterns based off that. It's so now it's waiting. It wants us to input some bar you matter so it probably is best if we or reorganize this just a little bit probably swapping the scanner and the replicator around so that way the replicator is right next to the mass fabricator so that way you can pump straight uh pretty much out and straight in i'm not gonna really move them in this case because this is more or less just our little kind of testing demo eventually as we kind of fully flush this out i'll probably move things over and kind of get everything more connected up but uh yeah so if i connect let's see if we can actually get some things hooked up here let's see i don't know if i have any fluid duct actually you know what i don't need any fluid duct. I just need a servo. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Fluid. Actually, you know, we might have some on us, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Let's see. Let's get all of this put away. 
fluid duct. Yes, we do. And we have servos. Awesome. Okay. Also might have found a trick to improve our uh, water wheel efficiency. Not by a whole lot, but I, I feel like any improvement in power generation, even if it is technically insignificant, useless power generation. Okay, so if we go like that, ignore. Hey, teeny little bit of UE matter. Now remember, it does take 120, so, well, this would in fact take quite a while at our current production rate. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and wait for us to get enough of the UE matter. However, as for, I think, a proof of concept, this basically works from, well, every indication. So now, now that we have this, we can start looking at uh, quan. Yes, so we can start looking at the quantum suit. Uh, to get the boots, we need two plate. Uh, leggings, we need two plate. The chest plate, we need four. Uh, it, do take note, it does use the nano suit, which basically is kind of like the tier one or tier zero, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, this does define the actual quantum suit as a tier 4, and then nano suit as a tier 3. I, I don't know how much I agree with that. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what metric it's using to define what the power tiers are. I don't know if that's an internal ICU thing or what, but I don't know. Uh, it does include the rubber boots. I'm not actually sure if we get full radiation protection from this or not. I would assume so, because it does have the scuba uh, helmet which does provide that radiation protection along with some of the other components i'll we'll have to see and i don't i also don't know if it's only when it has charge or if it's not um, but i think this is definitely what we're going to work towards in the next episode um i'll probably get some of this stuff put together for in between and we'll look at better armor and then probably let's see what what else is left Maybe get an iridium drill. I don't know how useful that will be, but we'll look towards getting that. Um, maybe also chopping off some of these energy things, and then maybe swinging backwards a little bit uh, to try to figure, get the magic working again. I think that's what we'll do, is we'll get our armor, and then perhaps we'll start exploring the Twilight Forest. Because I know that's a fun little... Not really quest. Eh, it's kind of a quest. It's a, it's a fun little tale of adventure all right well i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode if you guys did you guys know do smash that like button if you haven't already if you, uh have any questions comments or concerns for me about anything you saw or anything you want to know leave those down below and if you haven't already make sure you guys hit the subscribe button as it really does help out the channel other than that i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching guys have a good one peace out